Hi, David Taylor, Mr. Pelagonium here, back with another video for the Pelagonium and Geranium Society. Now, one of the biggest questions that I get asked is, how do I make my Pelagonium so bushy? So today, I'm gonna to have a look at a young zonal Pelagonium, which is gonna start the process of getting them into a, a bushy plant. And we talk about the different types of plants and maybe how they sort of need to be trained in order to make the plant bushy. It's a real big question that I get asked all the time. So let's have a look. Well, hello and well, welcome back to the channel. As I said, I suppose for those that may be thinking about exhibiting, um, you can do this if you don't exhibit, it's entirely up to you, but it's initially the cutting back of young plants in order to train them to become bushy. Now, obviously you may want to do that, you know, if you don't exhibit, but obviously exhibitors um, will need to do this particularly for the zonals. The zonals are the ones that need a lot of training when they're very young. Um, regals, on the other hand, and here's a young regal, for instance, um, they grow naturally bushy when they're very young and they need, and they need very little attention when they, well, you know, say in the first year, you can just let them grow. You don't really need to do anything. Maybe in the autumn period, um, you would give them a bit of a cutback when they're in their first year, in their first autumn, for instance. We, we've got a young plant here that was purchased. This is probably, I would think, three, four months old, maybe taken in the very, very late sort of autumn of last year, uh, filming this in early April. Um, so, I mean, this has grown on now to sort of be a, you know, a good young plant, but there is no need other than maybe some potting on to do with that uh, for a regal. You do not need to do any more with it. Just enjoy its bloom in the coming summer. Um, and realistically, you can leave it at that. Uh, the difference though is with the zonals. Zonals are quite different because they have a, a relatively limited branch structure and in order to make all the side shoots grow, to create new stems, and consequently try and get the ball shape, which ultimately we're aiming for, um, you are going to need to cut these back when the plants are relatively young. So with this plant, this is a plant of Gosbrook Susanna. It's uh, one of my own. It's a good red. It's a good dwarf red. It's a dwarf plant. Um, so it, it will grow ultimately for exhibition in a four and a half inch plant, uh, in a four and a half inch pot, or grown on as what we call a Florabunda, which is an overgrown dwarf, um, into a six inch pot, uh, which basically get, get, makes them, uh, you know, a much bigger display as a single pot plant for a dwarf, because dwarfs generally throw quite a lot of, say, slightly smaller bloom to what we, the big basic zonals, uh, but you can make a really good show plant from them in a six inch pot known as a Florabunda. So we'll have a look at this, I'll just pull up to the, um, the camera here. Right, so what we've got here, we've got a plant, we've got a little sort of dead dying bloom. I've just enjoyed this really, it's a young plant. The cutting was taken in August of last year. Just break that off because that's gone. Um, right, so, you know, we, we got two blooms, but you can see here out of this cutting, all I've got are two main stems growing up. And in order to create side shoots, we've already got a bit of a side shoot growing out there through the middle. Uh, we are gonna need to cut this down fairly hard. Now the cutting back can be done in a few stages. Uh, I will probably cut down on this long stem here, down to that side shoot there that's already growing out. And on the other side, I will probably cut down to that second intersection there in between these two blooms. There's a bloom there uh, and that bloom that's already out on that one. And that will make the plant want to branch further down, which is ultimately 
what we're wanting to do to create a bushy plant. Now we've also got a side shoot here growing out that's growing out to the side. I will probably stop that down as well. We've got a bloom that's just breaking there because I'm not wanting that stem to grow out really wide because ultimately we're looking to create a ball. Now, almost certainly this process takes two or three cutbacks because once I've stopped that one and once I've cut that one back as well, we'll probably get some more shoots growing out, but again, they will be on the length. Uh, and ultimately what we're aiming to do is to get some shoots beginning to grow out of the side. And that is what we're, uh, we're sort of aiming to do ultimately. Right, so here we are. Now, obviously the first thing that we do um, always is make sure that the plant is very much on the dry side. We always have to make sure of that because otherwise the stems that you cut back will bleed chronically and you'll get all kinds of rot and mess on them. So I'm just literally going to cut above this break that's already here. Excuse the wind noise, we've got an awful lot of wind today blowing. So there we are. I mean, that's an almost perfect cutting. If I strip that off there, we've got cutting material, but I've got quite a few of those, so I don't need to do that. And I'm going to go in on this one where there again is almost a, a little side shoot already growing. And I will show you that. I'll just snap that leaf off to get a bit of air getting in there. Right, and there we are. Now on this branch here, you can see we've got a side shoot growing. We've got another side shoot already breaking down there. Uh, that one's growing out, but we're probably going to have another one grow out of that uh, side break leaf joint there. Um, we're going to have probably almost certainly two growing out of this joint here. We've got one already breaking above there, just below where I cut back. There is a little break beginning to just bust out there of that leaf joint. And hopefully that will begin to fill in this gap. But ultimately... If we look at this plant head on, it is in a line and we need to fill these two gaps. Ultimately, I'll be able to show you the development of this particular plant. It's always quite difficult when I do these off script because of course I'm always having to remember to do all these little sort of other videos that uh, I'm doing. But um, that's the initial process. I'm gonna break that big leaf off there. Don't need that. And I'll probably strip off the leaf below on the side just to focus the energy of the plant into growing on those um, breaks. So there we are. Now, I will leave that. I'm not going to touch that now for two or three days to let that completely heal off uh, be before I once again then start feeding the plant. As this has been quite well fed up to this point. It's just in a three and a half inch pot, quite a small plant. Then there'll be the process of repeating that once all these little side shoots break out and begin to grow and we will tip stop them again in order to begin to get a circle. Now this is how ultimately something like that will end up. And you can see this is quite an old plant. It does have to be said this is a four year old plant, believe it or not. But once you begin this sort of process of cutting back and cutting back, and sort of potting it right up to the uh, the lower parts of the base of the stems, you begin to get this huge breakout of stems. This almost certainly, as a four-year-old plant, will be the last year that I use this for exhibition. But it just shows you that that would almost certainly have started life like this. So it just goes to show the amount of sort of cutting back and the development of the plant that you need to do with zonal pelagoniums over a number of years in order to get that lovely ball shape going. So there we are, that was just a, a little sort of video just to show you the initial work that you need to do on young zonal pelagoniums in order to get that lovely ball shape uh, beginning to develop. It does take a lot of work. Uh, in zonals. Obviously, if you just want to enjoy the blooms, 
uh, let them grow on. Um, these lower branches would eventually harden and make sort of the pushing through of side shoots very difficult for the plant. Uh, so we need to get them when they're relatively young. Um, as I've said, it really only applies to zonals. They're the ones that take the real great deal of work. Regals, on the other hand, same applies to scented and that sort of thing, do tend to bush much more readily when they're young. So you can more or less sit back and just enjoy them as young plants. But it's the zonals that take a lot of work to get into those lovely ball shape exhibition plants uh, that you've seen from me in the past. So, you know, that, that's one of those things to consider. It's, you do have to sacrifice them uh, to some of the young plants if you want to do that sort of thing, if you want to do exhibiting, uh, or if you want to develop them into these lovely ball shaped plants that uh, I obviously, for some of my zonals, want to get to exhibition. So there we are, that's all from me today. A quick look at uh, cutting back young zonal plants. I've got lots of things earmarked for us coming up, so I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.